Hey guys, it's David Wynn, Lion Life Podcast here, and uh, super excited. Um, one of the key guys to me getting started in affiliate marketing, to be honest, with, I'll be real with you guys, uh, David J. Woodbury, um, serial entrepreneur, um, big in the affiliate game. Uh, so you got a lot to, to learn from this guy. So um, he also is the number one affiliate for a guy named Ty Lopez. Not sure if you guys heard of him. But uh, he he teaches in the cash flow systems as well. So uh, so yeah, welcome welcome David. Appreciate you coming on here. Thank you very much for having me, David. It's uh, nice to be able to finally chat with you. I've seen you out there in the space as well, so it's always nice to to talk to those other people, kind of doing the same thing I'm doing out there. So great to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome, man. So uh, I'm gonna fire up some uh, some questions for you, and then we kind of kind of shoot back and forth uh, as well. Uh, sure. Actually, uh, where are you located right now? Uh, uh, I'm in Idaho right now, so uh, southeast Idaho. Okay. This is kind of our home base right now. Most of the time we're traveling, um, and usually we're over on the coast in Washington. Uh, we spend a lot of time in the Long Beach Peninsula, so that's usually where we'd be right now. But uh, because of everything that's going on, we're kind of um, we're kind of stuck here right now. A little bit more low uh, low key nowadays with all the stuff going on, right? Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> just staying busy, staying busy on the computer. Awesome, man. Uh, if you didn't already know, I'm over here in the East Coast, Canada, Halifax. That's a little okay. bit more of a smaller, smaller city. Okay. Very How's everything going over there with the uh, pandemic? You're, it's, it's, it's pretty stable, actually. Like we're actually one of the smallest affected areas in Canada. Okay. Uh, so things are pretty good. It's still weird going to the grocery store, you know six feet apart, two meters, whatever it is. Yeah. This is thing wearing masks like anywhere else. For sure. Um, yeah. It's been a little more stressful for me because my wife has some medical issues too. So um, really trying to keep that social distancing in effect for a while until we know exactly what's going on. So yeah, okay. weird times, but really a good opportunity for people to start, um, you know, investing in their future online. Um, so I, I don't know, if you've seen spikes in that as well, but you know, a lot of people are sitting at home right now just trying to figure out things to do. So it's been, it's been an interesting space to be in for sure. I find a lot of people are um, kind of looking for, they're questioning what they, what they do for work and, yeah, trying, to, and trying to find an additional income, right? Absolutely. Um, and a lot of people aren't able to get their jobs back too, I'm hearing. So, you know, people are kind of forced to, to shift gears and, and try something new. Yeah, for sure. So, so yeah, so the, let's, let's get into it. Um, so yeah, so one of the, one of the questions I wanted to ask you was like, what's the biggest challenge you have with your specific role right now and what you do and, uh, you know, how did you overcome it? So one of my biggest challenges currently, uh, has always been outsourcing. Um, I, I have certain systems down that I do in my business that, I'm just really bad at, um, at sharing information with strangers. <laughs> so outsourcing has been a real challenge for me personally. I'm, I'm kind of working through that, but, um, that's something that, that has really challenged me. Um, you know, and I won't hide that. It's, uh, I think a lot of entrepreneurs go through that struggle. Um, they get to a point where they have a lot of ideas in their head and, you know, ideas they know will work, but they end up failing on those ideas just because they don't, they, they don't have the manpower to, to get it done. So that, that, that aspect for me is really, really hindered growth. So that's something I'm trying to overcome is uh, outsourcing. And um, I'm actually working on some automations and stuff like that too. So, so you're, not that's kind of how I'm you're not doing everything yourself, right? Absolutely. Yeah, no, you just can't do it. It's, at one point, you just got to start, you got to start branching out and getting help. So one of the things I've really been looking into is automations and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of tedious tasks in my business that, um, that can be done through automation uh, and can really help tenfold, a hundredfold in what I do. So that's, that's kind of how I'm overcoming that. And then just, you know, just meeting good people and uh, making those connections and good quality relationships, like talking to you here. Um, Cause there's always people that can, jump in and help in some way and you know we can always help grow each other businesses so that's something i'm trying to overcome for sure yeah that, that's amazing man yeah. yeah yeah definitely the industry right now there's there's a lot of new things that are getting like very innovative technologies like chat bots 
Um, Absolutely. Animation software for ads, all these mm-hmm. different different avenues, right? Absolutely. Um, I thought I put this on do not disturb here. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> that was like, that was one of my notes that I always have to write down. Oh man. Yeah. I've been in the middle of like a, an hour and a half training or something. And then like text messages <laughs> start coming up. <laughs> All right, man. That's awesome. Um, so what's the biggest uh, surprise you've had in the last few months, I'd say, uh, and why? Uh, well, besides like the pandemic and everything, just how that's changed the world, um, really when I started designing, like building out my dream course, my digital real estate course, yep. um, I was kind of focusing on um, people that needed something new to do, focusing on new skills and stuff like that. So that's kind of really been a surprise for me is just uh, how that's actually fit uh, into the situation inside my business and helped me actually make a lot more sales just with that course in particular just because I have a lot more people sitting at home and, and looking for those new opportunities. So uh, for me, I've made a lot of new connections because of the, because of, you know, what's going on now. So I think that's kind of the biggest surprise for me is just kind of the, the way things took a turn. I didn't really think things were going this way this year. Mm. Um, I had other plans, but things kind of changed and kind of rolling with it. So you're seeing the new wave of interest and in people reaching out to you. Yeah. Um, I wanted to start doing a little more training on some more advanced stuff, but mm-hmm. I've kind of taken a step back and, and focused on some more of the basic things just because I've had a lot of more new people coming in that are interested. So kind of adjusting that way. Awesome. So it's maintaining the fundamentals, getting people started. Yeah, absolutely. So what's, what's some of the ways um, you kind of continue to learn um, in order to stay on top of things? uh, within what you do. Cause I know, I know you, you kind of like, I literally, uh, figured out how to, to rank, uh, YouTube ads based on some of your knowledge. Right. And kind of oh. modeling after some, what, some of the things that you did. And right. Right. Like, I'll, I'll thank you for that right now. Like, honestly, I've been able to, um, Absolutely. have some passive income and success from, from your strategies and things like that. So, so how do you, how do you, um, find different ways to kind of, yeah, discover and continue learning? Is, is... Uh, yeah, it's definitely important. Like ranking and stuff like that was a, kind of an accident for me, you know, going back to my cash flow video series that I put together, just t- kind of talking about my history with Ty and stuff and how I got into it. Uh, ranking on YouTube was really an accident. And so testing new things and just trying new things out really have helped me for sure discover new, new strategies and stuff like that. A lot of the new tactics and stuff that I figure out are just kind of accidental. Okay. Um, so just, you know, trying everything you can, uh, within, you know, whatever is legal, <laughs> uh, you know, some people don't, some people out there don't really try enough to be successful. So, um, a lot of people don't like to push the limits. Um, you know, going back to my story, I actually got in trouble for re-uploading Ty's videos. Uh, by, I, saw that by in the, I saw that in the Ty email. I didn't know if that was yeah. a true story or what. So if, yeah. if you don't mind elaborating on that, I guess. That's yeah, I actually, when that uh, 67 steps, here in my garage video, I reposted that. So that started getting, you know, thousands of views per day. <laughs> and um, like I mentioned in my, in my, my story, I, I was just sending that traffic to just the just a random lead gen landing page, uh, which was totally, totally not cool. And this is like, I totally was new at this. You know, I had no idea what I was doing. So um, collecting about 80 or 90 emails per day. um, And I ended up getting a, you know, a cease and desist letter from Ty's attorney. (laughs) Okay. You know, straight from Hollywood. Like, so I Googled it, obviously, because I was like, holy moly, is this real? So I Googled it and, you know, it's a big time, a big time attorney. So I ended up getting on a phone call uh, with Ben, Ty's brother um, and Maya. And we kind of talked over, you know, things and uh, ended up finding out about the link on uh, ClickBank. Uh, so um, that's kind of how, how we all, we all meshed and that's kind of where the beginning started. Okay. Um, and, and from there, I kind of knew the techniques that I needed to do to get those videos to take off. Um, so that's kind of where it all started. Um, but they ended up, you know, removing the cease and desist. And I think they copyrighted the video or something like that and pulled it down for a while. And then they ended up taking that off and everything was fine. But um, I guess my point is, is like, uh, it's, it can really be beneficial for you to, to test things, even though uh, it might be a risk. Um, 
obviously I knew I wasn't really doing uh, that. That could have been a, a really bad situation for me uh, if they wouldn't have been cool about it. Um, but, you know, promoting somebody else's product was not the right thing for me to do, but that was just a learning experience. And I really thank them for understanding that I was new in the game and, and uh, wanted to make things right. So, um, you know, that big risk really changed my life. And um, that's kind of why I'm here today. If I would have got shut down, um, that kind of would have been the end for me. I would have just probably given up. I wouldn't have, you know, had the courage to, to continue on. Um, I would have just considered it a failure and, and kind of moved on. But um, so don't be afraid to take those challenges, uh, you know, and really explore your niche. Look at what people are having problems in uh, inside your niche, your ideal customer. See what those people are struggling with. There are a lot of different sites out there that you can go to just find, uh, you know, questions people are asking. Um, whether that are those are reviews or places like Quora where people just ask questions. Um, that was another big place where I've launched affiliate campaigns just because you can find people that are asking specific questions and then match them with products and then figure out ways to, to get in touch with them. So uh, that's kind of how I learn and, and, and innovate in my business is just really testing and, and taking risks. Yeah. If you didn't, if you didn't take the opportunity to at least try like uploading those videos and things like that, there would be no reward, right? Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. And actually after that whole incident happened, that's when Ty started turning all of his videos to creative commons. So whenever he, you know, uploads his videos now, he made some creative commons um, because they've really seen what, what an impact that can make, you know? <laughs> well, I think, I think I read the email. He's like, they put in a, um, they reached out to you and they're going to take uh, potentially legal action. And then they're looking at it thoroughly and they're like, wait, this guy's making us a ton of money. Yeah. And they were surprised. I mean, that was like when they first started pumping ad money into that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this was all profit on my end. This was all mm -hmm. free, free money coming in. And that was, I, I think they were bringing in probably 2000 a day from me, just, just for me starting right out the gate with the 67 steps. So yeah, it really helped them. So I'm, I'm glad it all worked out the way it did. Yeah. And he's pretty low key about it, but I think it was something like there, I, I stopped counting, but I think they said, oh, like, over 600k in, in sales or something like that just Ty Lopez product alone yeah just something on <laughs> just on the 67 steps um I've That's definitely 67 steps yeah I've definitely crossed over I've crossed over a million for sure in um in just sales in general but for him personally you know I've done probably over over a couple million for them just in okay. in the last year probably <laughs> man that's so that's freaking. I know amazing. that's pennies, but you know, it's, well, it's coming from somebody, you know, that's, that's the thing is, um, uh, I was just a normal guy doing construction when all this, when this happened. So it just goes to show you, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are coming from, uh, industries and trades where maybe they don't think they're, they're good enough to start something like this, but it, it's really just, uh, knowing what to do at the right moment and getting that right information instead of just going out in the dark and, and being blinded by all that information out there. It's and really, it's really a lot simpler than people think. But. What I love about it is like, you're super humble about it, right? You're like, yeah, a few million here, but, but I know that I can tell that you have higher, you have higher expectations for yourself as well. And there's, there's, there's no limitation of where you can take this. You want to always want to grow. You always want to, you know, make it. I noticed in the program that I'm um, in the Facebook group and things like that as well is, is you want to add value to people regardless whether you're making a benefit or not. Absolutely. And maybe that's, maybe that's hurt me in some ways before, but uh, <laughs> it just makes me feel good. So I like to, you know, it's something that, that helps me personally for sure every day, and, you know, and it inspires me like a guy like me, like I made my, you know, a few thousand a month and, and things like that. I'm growing my brand and things like that, but it's well, that's amazing. something yeah. to, uh, it's a very inspiring, right? Well, thank you, David. So, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so what would you say, this is kind of, this is kind of a, yeah, I guess you can handle this one. It's uh so what's, what's been the biggest like failure um, in the last year, if you had any, and why do you think that um, happened? So that's kind of going back to the first question, I guess, the struggle, uh, not outsourcing enough. Um, I had a really good opportunity back in February to, on a product that was launching and I had some other things going on and I really was in a position to make a lot 
uh, uh, sales with that program. Yeah. And I just didn't, uh, I didn't act on it. I didn't outsource what I could have outsourced to really do what I needed to do with that campaign to, to make a lot of money. So I think that's probably one of my biggest failures of this year. I think this year is really when I'm realizing that I have a lot of really good ideas that I, that I know will work. I just mm -hmm. need, I need to really be focusing on uh, outsourcing that. So that's kind of my biggest failure for this year. Uh, I did do good with that campaign, but definitely not, not what I could have done if I would have um, went out there and had a little bit of help. And when you talk about outsourcing, are you, are you thinking like individual people or, or like kind of building a team? Um, uh, kind of building a team. Um, one thing I'll do, I, I'd like to kind of get more of a, a set team that I work with um, going just because I have a lot of random things that I do in across different niches. Uh, yeah. It's really hard to find somebody just for weight loss to just write blog posts on weight loss. So it'd be kind of nice to eventually build a team that can kind of adapt to whatever I want to promote. Because I'll have, you know, I, I do a lot of research in different affiliate products and I'll find different trends like I teach. And so if there's something that's trending, whether I know a lot about it or not, I usually jump on it just because I know I can get a lot of traffic for it. So if I have a team that could adapt that way with me, then uh, that'll really be beneficial to me. So that's kind of how I'm focusing on that. But yeah, my biggest failure is, is for sure the outsourcing thing. It's um, anytime you can even if it's just graphics or, you know, some ad copy, that kind of stuff definitely helps. So speed up the process, get someone else to make sure. it happen. You can focus on your business. And yeah, absolutely. You don't have to share everything. You know, there's <laughs> a lot of things that can be done that uh, can help you out if you uh, take the time. Um, actually, I'll ask you a question about that. Um, I know you had success with Ty Lopez products, but you're also big in uh, other affiliate product uh, marketplaces as well, like ClickBank and, I'm not sure if you're on Max Web at all. Not on um, Max Web, no. But ClickBank, you're very much familiar with, obviously. Yeah, ClickBank, JVZoo, um, those are like the two biggest ones that I run. And then I do share a sale. I do a lot of stuff through share a sale um, for just some of the normal blogs and stuff that I run. But yeah, uh, I think uh, what was it? Click Sales, I'm on as well. Uh, a few different affiliate platforms. I try to get, I try to have an account with a lot of them just because uh, when you find a product um, and you want to, to get it running like a campaign running, it's really hard to like go through the process of getting approved for an affiliate platform. Cause a yeah. lot of, a lot of them you have to do like a, you have to have a phone call um, and get approved and stuff like that. So I like to have some of them ready to go. The ones that I don't have to meet sale requirements for um, just so I can grab a product and promote it if I need to. If you find a product that's hot or something like that, you already yeah. you already programmed in. You can just launch it, right? Right. Yeah. Um, what would you say um, you're you're curious about right now? Like, what what interests you? What what do you want to kind of get into? So what's uh, been consuming a lot of my time is AI and automation. Yeah. Um, doing a lot of studying on that, learning a lot about uh, building building my own automation. I just did a video recently on that um, on Ubot. Okay. I don't know if you've seen that, uh, but it's a little platform you can use. It's a Windows only program, but you can build automation software. Uh, it's basically like drag and drop. So you can like drag. So if you want to go to a website and, and post or something, you can kind of build that platform right inside of Ubot. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I've been um, building some automations for myself that way. And then also looking at AI. Um, I'm really interested in websites that'll adapt to the viewer, the user, and only produce content on the website that'll be interesting to the user. So yep. uh, the website will basically change depending on who's looking at it. And that'll be kind of really beneficial for uh, targeting um, and building, building out affiliate-based sites because you'll, get, you'll have websites that'll basically be filled with content that are uh, driven by the user's demographics only. So that's <clears throat> insane. So, yeah. So depending on who actually goes on the website, it will Yeah, change. exactly. Yeah. So everything, it populates, uh, it blog posts, um, everything. It's not just like a landing page. It's like a full blown website. So those are the yeah. types of things that, that I think are really going to advance marketing and stuff moving forward. Um, I mean, that's really the biggest thing that's consuming a lot of my time. That's some next level stuff right there. I'm yeah. doing like uh, landing pages, click funnels, the whole thing, but like, and that stuff's amazing, you know, but, um, but 
this type of stuff is really going to dominate because you're not really going to have to think too much about what's <laughs> what you're doing, what you're promoting. Yeah, what you're and definitely out check there. out your video um, on automation for sure on that program because yeah, it's a cool little platform. Yeah, a website that changes like a, like a chameleon almost. That's 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 insane. That's yeah, so yeah, that, man. <clears throat> World, it's 2020. That's about all I'll say uh, on that, but that <laughs> there's a lot of cool stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff behind that idea. So, um, very, very cool. Yeah. Awesome, man. Um, I also want to ask you, like, I know we, we talked a little bit about Ty and all that stuff. What was it like, uh, like kind of like working with him? Like, did you have conversations? Was it zoom calls or did you just talk to his team? Like, what was that whole like experience like in the beginning? And then what, what's it like currently? And uh, so most of the time I just had the team that I talked to. So I yeah. have uh, contacts, you know, there that I speak to regularly. Um, and mostly Ben, Ben is like my main, my main manager, I guess you would call for, for the affiliate program there and everything I do. So um, they have a, they have a program director there and that's who I would usually talk to for um, setting up the, the teaching and all the lessons and stuff like that. Um, I've had a couple conversations with Ty. But most of the time, it's the team. So Ben and Maya are mostly the ones I talk to. Um, yeah. And then when there's been issues, you know, for other affiliates, I've caught things. Uh, there's been tracking issues and stuff like that that I've caught in the past. And um, I have one of the developers that I can talk to as well. So, um, so there's been things that I'm always helping improve, whether, you know, the affiliates don't really know that a lot out there. But a lot of stuff behind the scenes, you know, I give my, my input in and, and, and kind of help from behind behind the scenes as well so there's things that i suggest and and stuff like that um it's it's not like a daily conversation or anything like that it's kind of a yeah. just I, I check in when i want to check in and and talk to them when i have a question or whatever um i i do get a lot of billing questions from people or or technical support questions and stuff yeah. like that and i don't have a problem passing on messages and stuff like that um obviously i just kind of delete the hate mail but um, I don't get too much of that actually. I'm pretty lucky. <laughs> yeah, I definitely sent out a few emails. Um, but I got my one of my checks uh from the team I think just a couple of weeks ago or something. So I was really yeah. stoked about that. Yeah, and I know there was a lot of, you know, building out an affiliate program like that is pretty pretty difficult when you have a large amount of affiliates come in, also just because you have a lot of affiliates that don't have um they 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 figure out ways to scam the system and, and try to cheat the system. So there was a lot of that going on, you know, people using stolen credit cards to make their own commissions, buying programs with their own links. Uh, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff going on. So it's been a real, I know it's been a real, um, it's been a real issue for the developer, the developers over there trying to, trying to sort through that mess. Um, but I yeah. think it's, it's getting, you know, figured out because they have to verify all the sales that come through, you know, they have to make sure everything's legit. So, um, you, ha you get a lot of affiliates that aren't experienced that just go start spamming places and also, you know, just uh, kind of driving a lot of bad traffic. So it's a lot of weeding out um, and, and kind of fine tuning the system. So hopefully well, find, it'll be you, you, smooth. You find some people, like even, even people that are well known, I'm not going to drop any names, but you, you know, you, you see their trainings and sometimes it's like, go to ClickBank, get the link and just drop your link everywhere and, 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 and drop it all over Facebook, all over yeah. the place. And then yeah. that's how I'll tell you guys now, if you're just getting started in affiliate marketing. It doesn't work that way because Facebook will ban you. And, Absolutely. And take away your ad access and things like that. So don't just start dropping links everywhere, guys. Like, yeah, answering a question for someone, you're adding val add value first, right? And then if they're interested, then maybe you can provide them with the link, but don't just drop it off everywhere randomly. You don't even know these people, right? Yeah, the easiest way, like for anybody that's listening, that's new to affiliate marketing, just starting out, you know, just create a blog and write a blog post about that product and then link out to the product from your blog. Um, yeah. But, but uh, share your blog post to Facebook. Don't be sharing your affiliate link straight to Facebook. Um, that can yeah get you banned and cause all kinds of problems. You don't want to be start restarting ad accounts every month, you know. <laughs> no, it's been a battle. Uh, <laughs> it's been a battle with uh, actually talking about automation. Facebook, I think, has some automation <laughs> on their back end uh, when it comes to ad ads and stuff like that. So you know, there'll be, okay, there'll be days I did nothing and uh, it's like your ad account's gone. So you know, yeah, that happens. That can happen. Like Facebook's a huge company. 
Um, Absolutely. So if that can happen normally with you not spamming everything, then definitely don't don't spam. Because <laughs> yeah, because you'll be looking yeah. at right. So yeah, much. it's just more of a hassle. And you'll lose all that information, you know, you'll lose all that data that you've, um, you've built up, you know, if you're, if you're collecting data through an ad account and then it gets shut down, all that data is gone. So, you know, you're starting over every time you have to start a new ad account basically. So yeah, try to keep things, try to keep things legit. No spamming. Yeah. Try exactly. to provide value. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah that's awesome, man. Yeah. would love to continue, uh, you know, seeing what you're doing this year. Obviously, I'm building my building up my podcast, building up my brand, and uh, if we can collaborate on anything, obviously, that'd be that'd be amazing absolutely. As well. Looking forward to that. Absolutely, yeah. I spoke with you a little bit about, you know, kind of doing that, maybe a little training, training here and there for sure. Um, certain topics that I don't touch on, so I'm I'm always up for that for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, any big any big plans in the following months? Uh, are things increasing or slowing down over there in your area? So in my area, the, it's the, all the pandemic stuff. It's it's not it's slow here, luckily. But I don't know for sure because of the testing. You know, it's it's I don't know if they're really testing a lot of, of people where I'm at. Um, I know close to me. I don't know if you're familiar with Sun Valley, Idaho. Um, it's a really popular resort. There's a lot of you know, celebrities that have homes there and stuff like that. Okay. But they've, they've got the largest, uh, like per capita cases, they more than New York. So I'm wow. about, uh, 200 miles more away than New from York. that. More yeah. New York. Per capita. So, um, wow. so that's a little bit scary, but I, I haven't heard anything as far as new cases showing up and stuff like that. But then again, you know, who knows with, I don't, I don't think they're really testing everybody to be honest with you. Where, where's the first place you want to go um, when things get back to normal? Because you, you said you mentioned that you like to travel. You like, like a laptop on Yeah. Right? Yeah. We got to get back to the coast. We got to go. <laughs> we got to get back to the Oregon and Washington coast. That's like our favorite place to hang out. So okay. that's, that's where we want to head. Awesome. Um, yeah. Well, I appreciate, um, appreciate you hopping on here, man. Yeah, I know you didn't, you did, definitely didn't have to, but. Uh, you know, adding value to people, it makes a real difference. I know when I was first starting, uh, people like yourself inspired me to to learn more, build knowledge up. and, and uh, Yeah, I'm the same way. You know, I followed, I followed uh, people, you know, just like myself that, that started out, I, you know, I tended to follow other people that were in my same profession. I found, I found somebody else that did construction when I was first starting that uh, was starting to build an online business. And I kind of gravitated towards that person. Um, and they really helped mentor me too. So, um, yeah, I, I absolutely love helping people. It's, it's a lot of fun. Like I said, I don't know if it's hindered me at, at some point, but, um, I've gotten a lot of uh, good connections from it and I've seen a lot of people have success with it. So that at the end of the day, that definitely makes me feel good. Um, and I can't complain, you know, I'm, uh, making way more money than I did doing construction. So <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. If you could give advice to like new people just getting in, I do consulting for, you know, some people just getting into affiliate marketing and stuff like that as well. If you can give some yeah. advice uh, to someone just jumping in, just discovering things like how should they get started or what could you tell them to? When, when um, the started? easiest thing, if you're, you know, I know a lot of people say this, but figure something out that you're really interested in and start uh, building content around that. Um, it, it's a lot easier to stay consistent and build content around something, even if you're not monetizing it yet if it, it's interesting to you. So really focus on uh, getting content out and work on that content creation. Um, like I said, it's just so much easier to do it when it's, uh, it's something you're passionate about and you love, whether it's just like a hobby, um, you know, or something that you're a business that you want to start or a brand. Uh, and then I really suggest anybody that's starting out that wants to build something is, I know a lot of people don't say this, but start and build a website. Okay. as a hub. Um, I, I always suggest having a, like a main website, like a WordPress, full on WordPress style site. And then, uh, you know, linking out if you're going to do landing pages from there. But when you're starting out, focus on building that main hub of a website with that content on it. And then, a, you know, a couple social channels, uh, maybe a YouTube channel, if you want to do video and Facebook. Um, and don't overwhelm yourself, but just try to keep content flowing. And then, uh, you know, start building a following to your pages. 
um, and then start getting traffic to your website. And then you can start figuring out the monetization after that. Um, but, but I think a lot of the people make the mistake of just finding an ad on or finding something on ClickBank and starting a Google ad and just running it for a week and spending a thousand dollars and making 50 and then giving up and then moving on to the next product. You know, you got to kind of build a foundation and, and get things going. Um, and if you build it, if you build a, a brand that's around something you enjoy and you have followers that are following you because of you, they'll pretty much purchase anything from you. So monetization becomes a lot easier when you're um, connecting with a group of people that actually like you for you instead of just running ads all the time. Um, another mistake beginners make are when they get into an ad that's profitable, they'll, they'll start spending 20 grand a month on ads and they'll scale it up. Maybe they're making 17,000 or maybe they're, maybe they're spending 20 grand, but they're only making 2000 profit. And then they scale it to 30,000, but they're only making 3000 profit. So the margins aren't that much higher. Yeah. And then, and then you're stuck in this cycle where if you stop your ads, you have nothing, you have nothing to show for your ads stop, your revenue is gone. You have to refigure out everything all over again. So uh, really, really starting out with that foundation and then, and then scaling it from there and is really the best route I would take if I was a new person starting out. Um, yeah. I jumped the gun a lot when I was when I was starting out and wasted a lot of money doing those types of things. So that's just my two cents on that. So building a building a personal brand, um, adding value to people first. Yeah, and this doesn't have to be like a personal show your face type of brand. Okay. Okay. This could be like you know a logo you come up with um, where you narrate behind the scenes the the content, or it's just text, or however you want to do it. You don't always have to show your face, but build that build that hub build that brand hub where everybody where everything is going to branch off from um it'll just make things way so much easier so you could be your own business or if you're more a little more shy a little more timid you can have a yep. build a brand build a business and then, yeah and then uh produce content that way exactly yeah for instance i just started a, a new youtube channel um and it's taken off really really good i i okay. it's something I'm kind of nerdy about. I like, um, radios. I like, uh, like scanner radios and stuff like that. So yeah. I started a, a channel, um, talking about that and I, it's just taken off because I found, uh, one, one product in that niche that I'm just doing tons of different trainings on and showing people how to use it. And there's not a lot of that information out there online. So a lot of people are flocking to my new channel because of that. Okay. And, um, so that's just kind of like one example of, of something that I'm starting now that's starting to work. You know, I built my website for it. I created my YouTube channel. I'm just starting to create that content and people are naturally, you know, I'm using my techniques for YouTube and ranking and stuff like that. Um, and then going out there and just finding those problems people have in, inside of that niche and then just solving them. So. Awesome. So that's like an additional yeah. business for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm always starting new things, David. I'm like, <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think I got 73 YouTube channels now or something like 73? that. 73? Yeah. And I that like, I run. I had like four. I was like, yeah. That was so, a lot, but okay. And I don't act, I'm not active on them all the time. Obviously a lot of those channels I've, um, I have that are just ranked and, and I get natural views on and I don't really care so much about, but yeah, I got a lot, a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. I got a lot of work to do, man. I need uh, to build up 70 more <laughs> channels here. And no, uh, yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, no, and, and maybe that's another thing that's hindering me, right? Like, uh, maybe, I, <laughs> maybe I'm just going too willy nilly with the uh, with everything I got going on. <laughs> uh, that's amazing, man. Um, uh, if you don't mind, it's a little more of a personal thing. Uh, like I noticed that you actually look physically different. Um, I began to like healthy lifestyle, kind of like I, you know, definitely fell off the bandwagon um, during this quarantine with uh, eating oh, habits yeah. and things like that. Trying to, I just did my first uh, like kind of home-based workout, uh, like a real one. Um, okay. Like where I just held myself accountable and things like that today. I felt great afterwards. Uh, you yeah. lost like a ton of weight, man. I'm like, you can tell me a little bit about what, what you did there. It's just a, on a personal level. But. Yeah, so I'm, I'm 100 pounds lighter than I was in Crazy. February of 2019. And I have just really been so my secret has just been getting on the treadmill every day for at least um, an hour and a half 
and I have a little, I have a little uh, laptop stand on the treadmill now. So I just take my laptop on there and I just, uh, it's turned into a habit for me. Um, and, and then just, I, I ride bikes a lot. I just, uh, I used to really be into biking when I was younger. Um, and just got back into it and just, just wanted to, I just had to change. Like, uh, I, I felt like I felt horrible and, and I just wanted to change. So really all I'm doing is eating better. I've cut out sugars and, and a lot of bread and stuff like that. And then just, uh, exercise, just treadmill and biking basically is all I'm doing. Nothing, uh, nothing crazy. The sugary stuff. Well, Don't get me wrong. I'm still like, I'm, possible. Yeah. yeah, I'm still a candy guy, but, um, <laughs> definitely cut out 95% of it. Potato chips is my vice, bro. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's another hard one. Salty snacks, right? Yep. Um, you look like a, like a, like you're in a rock band sometimes, man, like you're styling and, and, and things like that. Have, have you ever done music? Oh, thanks. Yeah. My, my, actually one of my friends and I have a band. Uh, we, it's not necessarily a band. It's electronic music. It's called far off. Uh, okay. we're working on, we're working on new music there as well. So that's another thing I have going on. Um, but yeah, I've always been into music. I've played guitar since I was, uh, in middle school so um i play a little bit of piano but yeah i do I, i'm into i'm into all kinds of music from from heavy metal hard rock to to country to classical you know i i like a little bit of everything yeah i'm the same so, way i like um i'll listen to popular stuff but also i'll go back to the elvis bg oh yeah i'll throw on rob zombie randomly because i love rob, rob zombie stuff yeah, that's an old classic. Um, like all that stuff. I also do some music myself growing up. I always wanted to be able to sing and stuff like that. Um, didn't really, can't really hold that much of a tune. So I started, uh, <laughs> so I started rewriting rap songs and stuff like that. And uh, Oh, nice. So I, uh, I did music. I still do from time to time. Uh, do some hip hop and R&B stuff. Do you ever put any of that out? Uh, yeah, I had like an album like uh, right after high school. Oh, um, nice. I use this app called Smule and I just do some freestyle music and What's funny about this is uh, through that, I met a lot of people from all over the world. Uh, one artist in um, California, one's from the UK, one's from Texas. And we had this group together. We did music on there just for fun. It's kind of a yeah. way up for me sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on there, jam out, like sing a hook or something, and then someone else will jump on a verse or, or whatever. So it's a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm heavy into music as well. And Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, music definitely keeps me grounded. Like, uh, there's days when, you know, I just need to get away from everything I do online and, and music's definitely what I fall back on most of the time. Yeah. Yep. I think it's important to stay, uh, stay knowing what you enjoy and, and who you are as a person as well on top of yeah, absolutely to make yourself stay, uh, I guess, sane or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think I've gone on that, you know, a journey the last few years, um, personally just kind of trying to figure out who I am as well you know like I feel a lot more comfortable in my own skin now um since since I've lost the weight and and just felt yeah I felt more like myself I've just uh feel like I was trying to pretend I was being somebody that I'm not you know dressing um not how I would usually dress you know yeah I'm just kind of finding myself again I guess um (laughs) you know, the last couple of years with everything that's been going on online and stuff, I've kind of, I I really haven't taken the time to focus on my own mental health as well. So, you know, now that everything's kind of smooth sailing for me and I kind of know what's going on and I know what I need to do to keep my business running. um, I've had a lot of time to, to focus on myself too. So. Awesome, man. Well, uh, I'm not going to take up any more of your time, but I appreciate you jumping on there. Looking forward to uh, see more of your content. Uh, Absolutely, David. Learn from you and uh, possibly working on some collaborative products, projects, right? And yeah, man. Appreciate uh, learning more about your personal life as well. It was uh, super dope. So, super Absolutely, amazing. David. It was good to chat with you. Nice to finally uh, talk to you. Awesome, man. Um, I'm sure um, I'll be hearing from you in the, in the Facebook and things. And if you could send me the link for um, your new uh, YouTube channel that you produced there i'd like to check it out as well sure yeah don't uh don't share it around though i want no, no, to know this keep just... that one uh, no i'm trying to keep I, I try to keep like private some places you know like this whole ty lopez thing was kind of an accident like being public <laughs> about everything yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you're more so, low-key you know, yeah like a lot of the stuff i do um is, is low-key uh, and I, obviously i don't have any problem sharing in trainings and stuff like that but a lot of the outside projects i don't want to be influenced by 
these product projects, you know? Mm, yeah. So, but yeah, you. I'll so, send it over and you can check it out and see what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah I'll sign the non-disclosure agreement and, <laughs> 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 but, uh, but yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I appreciate you. And, uh, like I said, uh, I want to say thanks for, uh, you know, I wouldn't be in this uh, space uh, without some of your content as well. So. Absolutely, man. I'm really glad you, um, took the, took the chance and, and decided to try to do something. Um, if, if you were, you know, stuck maybe, and, and I was the one that kind of pushed you over the edge. I really appreciate that. Um, means a lot to hear those words from people that I've helped. Awesome brother. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, we'll be in contact. All right. Absolutely, man. Have a great day. Take care. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, guys, that was David J. Woodbury. Uh, jumping on the podcast there. Legend, man. He's super humble, but this guy uh, knows what he's doing, knows what he's talking about, learned a lot. Um, appreciate you guys joining and checking the podcast out. We're going to have new collaborative projects um, in the upcoming uh, events as well. So keep posted, keep channeling in. I also have my, my podcast that I do uh, through not just, so, not just the video, but the audio aspect as well on a uh, every few days so look forward to that appreciate you guys checking out the content it's david win lion life podcast appreciate you guys for joining in and listening um if you want to go ahead and um share this content with anyone that you that would find it valuable we appreciate you and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one